Hey guys, so by now you've got a fairly good idea of how scientific notation works, but now I need to explain a few more things. If you get a number that's got a whole lot of zeros like this at the end or at the beginning, so for example if I had a number like this, see you've got a whole lot of zeros at the beginning, then we need to be careful. Okay, so let me show you how it works. So you're going to say 3, and then remember scientific notation is always the comma after the first number. Then you're going to write all the numbers until you get to the point where there's only zeros. Then you don't write those down. Then you're going to say times 10, and then you just need to see how many places. So the decimal place in the first number is over here. Now it's over here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we'll put 11 over there. Okay, like that. Okay, so here's one over here. Yes, we see a whole lot of zeros, so we must remember to not include that in our answer. So the answer is going to be 4 comma, so it's always a comma after the first number. That's how scientific notation works. You then write down all the numbers that you can see, and then if you get to a point where there's only zeros at the end or at the beginning, then you don't have to include those. Then you say times 10, so the decimal place in the original number is here. Now we've moved it over here. So that is 1, 2, 3 places, and so we say times 10 to the 3. Alright, if possible, pause this video and try this question quickly, because I'm going to explain something very important now. So this one over here would just be 3, and then it's always a comma after the first one, 2, 8, 4, 3, 4, 2, 1. Then you look at the um, decimal place, it was here. Now it's here, so that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places, so you'll say t times 10 to the 5. Let's do another one. So this one would be 7, 1, 4, 8, 3, 2, 3, 6, 8 times 10. Now if we look over here, the decimal place was there, now it's between the 7 and the 1, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, also 5 places, so that's going to be times 10 to the 5. Now I need to explain something important. What have we been doing this whole time? We keep moving the decimal from one point and then we're moving it left. See that? Here it was here and we moved it left. If you move it left like that, then this number must always be positive. That's what we've only done up till now. I haven't showed you any that move to the right. So if we move left, so if you move the decimal left, then uh, we, then you would say times 10, and then this number over here would always be a positive number. Okay, What that means is you're moving the decimal left. But now if we look at something like this, oh, check all these zeros out. When there's a whole lot of zeros in the front or at the back, you can ignore them. And so we're actually going to start off with the first proper number, which will be 4. And then you just fill in all the numbers after that, that unless there were like a whole lot of zeros, but there aren't. So that's going to be 4,832. Now, the decimal is here, but now we're moving it to over here. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. But that is 6 places to the right. We have moved the decimal 6 places to the right. So we'll say times 10 to the minus 6. So if you move the decimal right, then you'll say times 10, but then you will use a negative number. So now I'm going to give you a mix of the different types. Remember, if there's a whole lot of zeros in the front or at the back, you don't include it in the answer. So here's the first one. Now, I see there's some zeros, but that's not what I was talking about. What I'm talking about is when you get something like this, where you've got a whole lot of zeros at the end or in the front. If it's in between other numbers, like over here, then you still include it. Alright, so scientific notation, we know that we always start with the first proper number that we can see, and then you just fill in everything. 4830018624848. Now we need to see what we did with the decimal. So the decimal was here, now it is over here. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we say times 10. Now it might be a minus 10 or it could be a positive 10. We know that if you move, so what did we do? We moved the decimal to the left. And it says here, if you move the decimal to the left, then it's a positive number. So it's going to be 10. 
Okay, here's another one. Look at all these zeros in the front up till there. So we start with the 4 and we say comma. Then we say 8, 3, 2, 6. Then we say times 10. Now we need to see where the decimal is in the beginning. Then we need to look where it is at the end, which is over here. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. So it could either be a positive 5 at the top or a negative 5. We need to see in which direction the decimal was moved. So the original number had the decimal here. Now it's over here. So it has moved to the right. So it says here, if we move the decimal to the right, then it will be a negative. And we moved it how many places again? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we'll say negative 5. Let's try these four questions. So for the first one, we know that there's no zeros. So we're just going to say 3, 2, 4, 1, 6, 8 times 10. Now the decimal was over here and now it's over here. So we have moved it two places to the left. And so the answer is positive 2. So we'll say times 10 to the 2. For the next one, we see there's a whole lot of zeros in the front, so we ignore that. And we say 3, 2, 6 times 10. Now the decimal was over here. Now it's been moved 1, 2, 3, 4 places. But it was moved 4 places to the right. And so if it's moved to the right, then it must be negative. So we'll say negative 4. The next one, ooh, all of these zeros at the end, so we ignore that, and we say 1, 2, 6 times 10. Now, where is the decimal if there is no decimal? Well, it's at the end. And now, it's been moved 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, because it's over here. So, And it was moved from the back to the front, so that's 7 places to the left, and so that will be a positive, so it'll be a positive 7. Here we've got some zeros in the front, so we ignore that. Remember when you've got a whole lot of zeros in the front or a whole lot of zeros at the back, you ignore that, and so it's 1, 4 times 10. Now the decimal was over here. Now it's been moved 1, 2 places, so it was moved 2 places to the right. And when it's moved to the right, then it's negative 2. And that's it. Thanks for watching.